Hello everyone, today I will be reviewing and responding to your opinions which you've sent via Google form. Thank you for all the submissions, I've gotten more than I expected. Before we begin, I don't hate any of the groups brought up, so don't go in my comments saying my response was negative because I hate so and so. A lot of people bias members for their looks and not them as a whole, submitted by Anon. To be honest, I used to bias certain members just because of their looks, and I think other fans definitely have before getting to know them. The hate towards Wan Ying is very suspicious. There must be something behind it. Submitted by Anon. The only reason why others hate on Wan Ying is just because they're jealous or just because they're following a hate train. Since when have K-pop stands hated not criticized a female idol for one of these reasons? Not an opinion, but I need to know your bias in Luna Minds even do anything for that woman submitted by a very relatable Anon. My bias in Luna is Heejin. She's one of my alt biases. If you have to bring up a group's mistreatment just to win a petty argument on Twitter you've already lost and need to step outside. I mainly see this with Luna but some other groups as well. We shouldn't be losing morals and empathy for something as small as a K-pop fan one. The way that so many K-pop stands that I've argued with say at least my faves gotten paid. Like, Luna's mistreatment is more than just not getting paid. And if we're arguing about something completely different and you bring up something like this or the problematic actions of my faves, I assume that you don't know how to back your argument up and that you just want a reaction out of others. Plus sometimes, the people who bring up Luna's mistreatment are the same ones who were supporting the boycott. A single K-pop idol or group like BTS. Blackpink or Psy didn't alone pave the way for K-pop. Instead, they all contributed fairly in making K-pop a global sensation submitted by Zoe Stedek. One of my shorts included an opinion like this, and, wow, did I get criticized so hard for it, but it's the truth. While they did help pave the way for other groups globally, you can't be ignorant to the development of K-pop and ignore the success of groups and artists prior to BTS. Same thing with armies who love to say BTS paved the way or this group was able to get the award thanks to BTS. It's like making a mall and advertising it as the best in the universe and promoting it like crazy. But when it's time for the grand opening, you don't let anyone use it, but you still fund it to keep the lights on but it's basically just there for display. What's the point in doing all that then? What's the point of saying they paved the way if you're not going to let other artists walk on the path that they paved? No songs are bad. It is just the way different people see or hear it from different perspectives which have different meanings that can relate to each and every individual, submitted by kind guy. I also made a short like this where I shared songs that I personally didn't like, and those were just my opinions. A bad song in my taste might be an amazing song in another person's taste. Everyone has different tastes and opinions, and I hope everyone will be able to accept another's opinion, because some people struggle with that. Every channel in this community is the exact same. I can only distinguish a handful. It doesn't have to be so homogenous. But nobody tries to bring anything new to the table. I mean, the formula works. The views are stacking up. But I have hard time getting attached to K-pop channels like channels. In other communities I'm in, submitted by Anna. I've mainly noticed this with shorts creators, since I don't spend that much time watching long-form content as I do shorts. But the amount of times I've seen the same video with the same exact text reposted or copied on different channels is annoying. Some of the only channels that I can point out due to their mainly original ideas are K-pop Vacation, Everglow Up, Facts and Fiction, and NC Titty. Okay, I don't really know if this is in K-pop opinion, but saying a random Korean influencer looks like idol annoys me so much submitted by Anonymous. Don't worry, it's definitely not just you. Every time I see a video of some random Asian person, the comments will always say oh you look like this idol, when they don't at all. Not all Asians have to be compared to K-pop idols. I watched a video of a girl showing off her choreography to a song, and tell me why one of the comments was you look like Chai Young from Twice. And when I disagreed, the poster of the comment said they had the same hair, same facial structure, same clothing style, same dance style, and same body. I had no words when I saw the reply because one, you could not see her facial structure since she was wearing a mask and was far away from the camera. Two, the clothing style was an oversized white tee and gray sweatpants. Three, the same hair was just blonde hair. Another version of these comments I saw which is very annoying, was you look like a mix of Sana, Chaewin, Jenny, Yeji, Hani, Felix, and Jungwin.
Like, is this really necessary? Miners already debuted even in second and third gen, but people notice it now. Submitted by Anon. I often see comments and videos where people say the industry has started to debut miners. They haven't just started. It's always been a thing. I'm not trying to diminish how harmful it could be. But you have to recognize that it isn't anything new in the industry. There are a handful of second and third gen idols who have debuted as miners. Majority of Shani, FX, A Pink, newest NCT Dream, and Weki Meki debuted as miners. While it may be more common in the fourth gen and future generations, it's nothing the industry hasn't seen yet. Admit an idol is wrong, it doesn't matter if they are your fave or not submitted by Sundoge Sundoge Sering he. I see a lot of K-pop fans struggle with holding their idols accountable. We are not asking for you to unstand the group and burn all your merchandise. We're asking you to acknowledge what your idol did was wrong, and people are allowed to be offended because of it. The K-pop community has such a strong yes-men mentality where the facts or context of a situation will never matter. The community is full of so much false info it's insane and people who can't think for themselves just believe everything so now, they hate some random idol over nothing. Literally, I mainly see this happen during controversial situations, but it even happens when there isn't a controversial situation and an idol's expression or words are misinterpreted by their own fans, to where it looks like the idol intention was to spread hate or shade another artist. I've recently seen this happen in two situations, one with G-Idol's Soyeon, where G-Idol was doing a try not to sing dance and when a Taylor Swift song came on Soyeon looked like she hated the song. And some Neverland spread the clip with that message after seeing one video claiming that she hates Taylor Swift, which led to a lot of hate from Swifties. The second situation is one I think many K-pop fans are aware of currently, and that is the Made in Abyss controversy. The way some K-pop fans are carelessly calling the idols involved pedophiles is disgusting and shows that they were just waiting for a chance to jab at these idols. Throwing around such words are never taken lightly. While the content in the manga or anime may make people uncomfortable, it is never right to throw around harmful terms and labels. The media that these idols consume does not represent who these idols are as actual people. I enjoy watching crime documentaries, but that doesn't mean that I'm a criminal, or that I aim to be one. Not to mention, that the negative and false accusations about the show, idols, and author spread like wildfire, which can end up being extremely damaging towards their careers. There shouldn't be more than two title tracks for an album, because there always ends up one flopping if there's more, submitted by a lonely Swedish pop stand. I dislike the idea of multiple title tracks because I just end up forgetting about the other title tracks and focus on one only. I seriously had no clue for the longest time that either way by I've and off the record were title tracks alongside Batty, which is the main title track for me. Either way and off the record wasn't as well received as I've's prior tracks which led to negative reactions towards the track due to the difference and because it was supposed to be a title track, but I'mo, it sounded like a b-side. The reason why boy groups don't have as much recognition as girl groups is because the majority have a concept or a sound without trying something new, submitted by Anna. I also believe it's because boy group songs aren't often general public friendly like many girl group songs are. Since boy groups tend to make music for a specific group of people, which brings in more loyal fans rather than general public support. Currently, I love listening to Boy Next Door since they're a breath of fresh air for me in terms of boy groups and they don't follow the generic boy group sound, and I hope they never will. S Class Baggy Jeans and Talk Saxy are the three worst 2023 releases. Submitted by that one fifth to 50 stand. I lowkey agree with you on this, and before anyone gets upset, Please remember this is me and that 150 stands opinion. But TBH, I think baggy jeans grew on me. I kinda like it now. For S class, I hate the chorus, but everything else is tolerable. It's just that if it came up on Spotify I'd probably skip it. I enjoyed Lilala though. I did not like the use of the saxophone in Reezy's comeback. I think I only like the intro of Talk Saxy. I tried to adjust to it but I just couldn't so. Again, these are just our opinions on these releases. We do not have to like everything that's put out by different artists, and you shouldn't be called a fake fan just because you don't like something your faves released. Idols should be using their platforms to talk about the problems going on in the world, like the Israel-Palestine conflict. I have not seen that many idols talk about it except for BM from cards submitted by a Shukla alt. 
K-pop idols aren't really allowed to voice their own political opinions and ideologies since it'd probably stir up a huge controversy, depending on what issue they're talking about and their stance on it. Also, if they want to put out statements or something, it's most l likely going to be reviewed by their company or the people who manage the idols and it'd most likely get declined if it poses a threat to the company. As far as I know, Korea has politics and political issues that are highly divided, so if an idol shows support for one side, then they're still gonna get backlash for it. During the election period, idols often refrain from using or wearing products with red, blue, pink, and light blue. They also refrain from using thumbs up or peace signs since in elections the number one and two and the colors correspond to the two candidates. Korean celebrities receive criticism for allegedly making an indirect political statement, so imagine how much worse it'd be if they outright said what they supported or which side they're on. I'm not trying to say that idols should never speak up about problems going on in the world. They definitely should have given the chance, but you have to keep in mind that they have an image and reputation they have to maintain. And even a small statement or slip up could damage their career. So not all idols want to or are able to speak up about certain topics because of this. I don't stand new gens, but they're making a huge impact and some people just can't accept that which is annoying. Like them or hate them, they're pretty big arn. Personally, I'm not a fan of their music, but I can admit facts. Submitted by Anon. Their impact is right there. But I've seen some stands disregard it just because their debut wasn't that long ago. In just a year, they've broken so many records and gotten so much recognition, awards, achievements, and so, so much more. They've done better than most fourth-gen groups and maybe even some third-gen groups. Some K-pop fans get upset when people call them the fourth-gen leaders, but if that title is based on success and impact, then they'd rightfully earn that title. Backup dancers' outfits should not be a plain shirt and shorts. There should be more creativity in their outfits as well. They fill up most of the stages. Submitted by Ramit44. I think it honestly depends on the stage or what the concept of the song they're performing to is. But their outfits are usually toned down so they don't stand out too much and take away the attention from the idols. People need to just move on from members that left or were kicked out of their groups. It's okay to be sad remembering them but you can't mention them every single comeback and how much of a mess the group is without them. People still bring up Woo Jin, four years after he left Stray Kids, Genie almost a year after leaving in Mix, Ga Ram one year after getting kicked out of La Seraphim. Just support them separately and stop bringing them up like they're still in the group. Submitted by Fimi Cora. I guess I could understand if the idol has been there forever, like seven years or something. But at some point the fans should just not bring them up whenever the group does literally everything. It irritates me, especially with Jeannie. I hate when people make theories to why she left, or as they believe got kicked out. If the statement said it was for personal reasons, then that's what I'll believe. I'm not going to make up random theories like she had beef with the whole company or something. I see. People say there's no way she trained for so long and left just like that. Well, she did. So, she's redebuted as a soloist, so you can support her separately there. Anyways, is, these are all my responses to a handful of opinions which you guys sent in. Again, keep in mind that my goal was not to bash a group or idol, just to honestly respond to these opinions. Feel free to comment what you think about these opinions or my responses to them. It enjoy reading your guys' thoughts on these.